What's up everybody, All Pro Exterior Services here. Got the roof pump with the Briggs 6.5 HP key start. Um, it's got the fuel tank, so the video purposes here is to convert this fuel tank to tap into this drop tube right here in this 12 gallon tank. That way we don't have to keep filling this tank. So we're trying to figure it out now. So is what I do have, have a little bar fitting and is what I'm thinking about. I took out this little tube here that kind of connects to the air filter from the valve cover. Instead of drilling a hole in my valve cover, I could just simply probably slip that in, tighten it up on the inside. Bada bing, bada boom. Be done with that. And that'll provide vacuum, a vacuum pulse to the fuel pump. Uh, so is what I plan to do is maybe loosen the carburetor nuts here, taking off the air filter contraption. That'll give me good accessibility to the tank. And then over here, need to uh, drop your starter. Just get rid of it and your regulator. Just move it. And that'll give you the uh, access to the bolts underneath to hold the tank on. So that's kind of the plan and uh, remove the spark plug to prevent anything from cranking and go from there. So let me get some tools together and let's see what we can do here. All right, peace. All right, I took off the two screws here. They had this piece here. Yeah, let's get it for you. So they had this piece that kind of went like this. Let me show you here. Kind of like that. So, you have a screw here, and take off the two carburetor screws, take off this little cover, put that aside, and there's another one here that holds the air filter on, which already loosened, so this thing should come right off. Look at that. So, here's your air filter box. All right. So with the air filter box off, it kind of gives you a little bit more room to breathe and, and work. You know what I mean? So, uh, is what I would also like to do is find a feed line, which is buried in, under all this stuff here. <laughs> find a fuel line here, which... <laughs> yeah, it's buried, man. This, this is horrible. How they did this, but anyway, this is the engineering today that we got to deal with. Anyway, it gives you access to uh, a couple of more bolts, just opens it up a little bit easier for you to get. So now I'm gonna work on taking this regulator off and the starter off, and be cognizant. You want to disconnect your battery. Don't 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 leave your battery connected. That the positive cable hits something, it may spark something up. So just be cognizant of that. All right, guys, let me move on to the next steps. Peace. Okay, everybody got the starter off. Uh, it's actually, it, it's two bolts. It's kind of tricky, but uh, there's two bolts and there's a couple bolts here holding this bracket on where the regulator's at. Like one in the front here underneath the cover. Uh, I believe there's one here too. And then one here. So that holds the cover on here. That also holds the starter on. So, you know, we got that off. So now we're able to access the tank. Look at that. Good thing. Readily available. So I'm going to go ahead and get the tank off. Uh, unscrew these. There's one on this side. Pull that off. Probably have to drain it. I don't know how much fuel we have in there from the jobs today. But anyway, let me go ahead and take that off. And then uh, we'll get uh, to the next step here. It's kind of a pain, to be honest with you. <laughs> It should have made this a little bit easier to do, but uh, anyway, we're getting it. We'll get it. That's what we do. All right, peace. All right, guys. Since I got all the starter off, I'm able to access these both bolts. And then there's one over here that you have to get, which is right here. So you got to kind of, you know, work the throttle so you can get the angle right here. Once you get that one bolt and these two, comes off so next is the disconnect the fuel line I'm gonna drop the fuel in here and then uh, start configuring it up catch up with you in a minute peace 
this is what it looks like with the fuel tank off uh went ahead and again it was just a quick connect here so uh yeah i'm not i mean they got this thing so buried in here i would love to get to the carburetor and just put a uh, fresh hose on it but you know i don't know if i want to take the carb off with the gasket situation and all the linkage but i may just run a filter in here and a filter on the other side just double filter it ain't a big deal but i'm gonna go ahead and put the starter and everything back on because i'm not putting the fuel tank back on i thought about running a longer fuel line to a three-way valve and leaving a fuel tank on in case you never know you know and you, maybe i need maybe a fuel pump goes out i need to switch over but i'm not gonna mess with that i'm just gonna go ahead and roll with this all right let me catch up uh put the starter back together again uh let's see it's a little bit easy with everything out the way so you got these nuts here that you won't use and this you won't use because that came out of the fuel tank so uh it's kind of i'll show you guys well, i got this bolt in here for the starter so i'm gonna go ahead and roll like this put it back in play like that Put my regulator back on. We'll be in business. We'll be in business. All right, catch up. Peace. All right, guys and girls, I got the valve cover off. Put this little piece off. Uh, and as you can tell, the washer doesn't really sink in. So I have to either get a smaller washer or just grind the side of this down so it can fit in here. And that's going to be my pulse. My pulse for the... kind of wish that was an elbow, to be honest with you. But we'll see if that works. Anyway, got that done, got everything back over here. So this is all good, put the filter on. So once I get the filter on and put this on, we should be just hook up the fuel pump and roll. So uh, let me go ahead and grind this down. Just put a little grind on the edge, flatten it out, a little flat side so it'll sink in. Maybe two flat sides, so, and then we'll brake clean it and put some, I got some high temp silicon. We'll put some of that on there and just go from there. Catch up, peace. All right, guys, this is my setup. I got the washer cut up. You can see here it's flat on both sides. I'm a little barb. They did have a barb on this side of it. I cut it off. It was like a double barb or something. I don't know what it was. but So I'm going to uh, put some silicone on this, stick it on the inside. And I got another one around here somewhere. Here it is. That goes on the outside. Put silicone around that. Tighten it all up. And go from there. Let's see if it works. Catch up with you in a minute. Peace. Alrighty. Got the barb in. Got the valve cover on. Just remember, don't over tighten it. Over tighten this. This is cast aluminum. It will crack easy. I always go on a crisscross pattern when I'm tight. I'm just put them snug tight. And the way I like this is because it's not directly in the valve cover. In case that nut jam, that nut on the back of this comes off, it won't fall on the valve cover and cause any valve damage. So let's see what else we got to do, folks. Uh, Again, here's my spark plug. That'll go here. Boom. And we just need a fuel pump. And I, I, I do need to get some bolts to put this back together. Just I'm going to put a couple bolts up and uh, figure that out. But in the meantime, I'm just going to hold it temporarily just to get this thing going. So uh, here's the fuel pump. And we know that this one will go to the, uh, well, I've got two of them. Let's see. I think I have two of them. Yeah. So. So here's the fuel pump, and I'm thinking about just mounting it somewhere like right here. You know, something like that or even on on the unit itself because that's aluminum so it'll be easy to deal with so let me wrap my fuel lines and that's all we got left to do to wrap the fuel lines and see if this thing's going to work i don't know if this pulse is going to be strong enough out of this outlet here to give me what i need to crank get this fuel pump running but i think it will and then on the on the uh where this hose went which is right here let me show you on the air box right here you're gonna to want to put a cap so you can go to any auto zone and just put your cap on there all right so let me get it set up 
We'll catch up with you in a minute. Peace. All right, guys. Got the fuel line. Like I said, I just put a filter there for now. I may eventually pull the carb and run a straight line, but, I mean, that's temporary. It may be long term. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, here's your uh, fuel pump. So as you can tell, you got this one here that's kind of at the top of the fuel pump. That's the one that's going to go to the pulse. So the one from the engine is going to go here. And then here, one in, one out. The way you tell is that you blow in it. So, so I, I can blow in this one and it comes out of here. That tells me that the fuel pump, the fuel tank comes to this one. Where it blows out goes to the carburetor. So if I'm going to put this here, something like this. Or maybe even right here. That's why I'm going to put it right here. I like this better. Uh... I need to figure it out, but uh, I know where the fuel lines go. So that's just a little heads up. So again, the one at the top, if you're looking at it with the bolt pattern down, I don't know if you can see that. The top one, you know that goes to the to the valve or to the the pulse signal, and then just blow in and then figure it out. All right, guys, catch up. Peace. All right, guys and girls, we have the final product of the six and a half horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine conversion to a pulse fuel pump. So just kind of to recap, uh, you need a pulse. You need, a, you know, something off the valve cover from the engine. I decided to do it this way on mine. Uh, took off the valve cover. Uh, they had this little, you don't really need to take this off, but I did because there's a, a nut behind here it's kind of tough to get to but you could potentially leave this when you pull this off but I, I, I just ended up taking it off and this they had a hose going from here to this to this air hose to the air box right here I just put a cap on it real quick just to kind of keep any debris going into it so you're gonna need to remove there's a little plastic piece in here that you're gonna need to remove and I'll drop a picture in now So once you remove that little piece, it'll allow flow without you tapping into the valve cover. So, uh, and that's just basic EPA stuff. Anyway, so I, I decided to put the barb here, use a little high temp silicone, put your uh, clamp, run your hose from your pulsating uh, valve cover connection to the top of your pump, and then this one goes to the fuel pump, I mean the carburetor, and this is from my fuel tank, which is right here. And uh, when I had this tank made, I had two drop sticks put in it, knowing I'm going to do something like this in the future. So that uh, kind of future-proofed it. So I just need to tie strap that up to kind of keep it clean. I mounted my fuel pump to the frame of the AR pump, so that looks good. I also just, in the, in the interim, because I don't have the bolts, I, I plan to put some bolts in here to kind of hold this. Thing down but in the interim I just put some tie straps also tie strap my my fuel line to this and I got my filter in here because this was the breaking point because I took this line off the fuel tank so instead of putting a connector like a union just to connect these two I just decided to put the filter here no right or wrong way that's just the way I did it so no more filling up a fuel tank uh, I also bought an extra fuel pump that keep in the box because you never know. So let's try it out. Let's try it out. Let's put the choke on. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, we're in bypass, so we're good. So let's go. Ready? Do it. There we go. Runs good. It took uh, maybe 10 seconds to prime, 15 seconds to prime it. So I wanted to do this. I've been wanting to do this. We just haven't had time, and I, f I finally just stopped. I said I'm done with filling this other tank up, other tanks over here. I'm going to go ahead and put that in storage just in case. Uh, like I said before, I was thinking about putting the tank back on, putting a three-way in case that 
brakes on a job we can just flip a switch and roll but there's not enough room on this engine for all that to happen so i'm sure i could have figured something out but i just wouldn't i just figured we'd let's just do this and see how it works and you know we'll test it out in the near future tomorrow this weekend and all that we've got a bunch of work to get caught up on so we'll test it out but i'm excited it's been running great uh on on just just here and i like the install it's very clean there's nothing hanging off nothing like that it's very clean it wasn't hard to do but i will recommend remove your regulator remove the starter that allow you get boats here to the fuel tank and then pull a spark plug cable off which is here and you can get that bolt here there's a bolt that goes right i don't know if you can see it right here that holds the other side of the tank and once you do that just unplug it drain the tank and you're good and it makes it so much easier to get to uh, but again you got to remove this piece and if you're going to use this method if you have this engine you're going to use this method there's a piece that's blocking it it's like a little plastic shield it won't let the pump pulse to draw fuel so you got to remove that to let that valve cover open up i just didn't want to drill my valve cover so that's just me here it is another one bites the dust all pro ingenuity baby keep it coming please like sub call comment peace